Creating accessible pop-up modals in Webflow is difficult and requires complex interactions, lots of JavaScript, or third-party libraries. With the DOM element, better motors are possible in Webflow using HTML's native dialog element along with just a little bit of code. In this example, we can see that I can click the open modal button and I have a close button as well as can click off of the modal itself or even press escape. So we have some keyboard accessibility baked into this element already. And then also I can open a form element and I'm auto focusing on the first field here in name. And I have focus trapping already enabled without any JavaScript. I'm pressing tab and I'm only able to focus on elements with the, the, in the form not outside of it, which is what you'll get when you try to build these from scratch in Webflow. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey there, Webbay. So let's start with an empty DOM element in Webflow. I'm gonna go over to the settings here and I'm going to give this a tag of button and the text is going to say open modal just like that. Now let's go ahead and duplicate this and this is going to get a tag of dialogue and the text is going to be empty. And I'm just going to drop a heading inside of there for now. We'll make this an H2 as well as a paragraph. So those are both in there now. And we can't see anything right now because the dialog element is closed, but if you give it an attribute of open and then any sort of value, if I put T as in like trying to write true, then we'll start seeing our dialog element displayed here on the page. Now let's go ahead and apply a class of dialog and I'll set the width to 100% and the max width to something like 32 rem. Now let's go ahead and apply an element to our open button. I'm just gonna give it a name of L and an attribute of open button. And we'll select the dialog now and we'll add an attribute L equal to dialog. Now we just need a little bit of JavaScript to hook up our open modal button to the dialog element. So let's head into the page settings here. And in the before closing body tag, I'm going to paste this script. What we're doing here is we're adding an event listener to our document such that anytime we click on the page, the code inside of here will run. Now the code needs to check if the, the element clicked or e.target in this case, has a matching attribute equal to this selector. So our attribute selector here is again, element equals to open button. Now inside, if we've met, made that match, then inside here, we want to run this code. So we will get the thing clicked again, which is that e.target, and we'll get the next element sibling of that. This works because the dialogue is the next element in the hierarchy of the button. So if I save here, you'll see we have button, and then the next element sibling just means that this is right down here. It's the next one in the tree. Back in the code, we'll store what's returned by this expression here in the variable next dialog. If next dialog is not undefined, then we will go ahead and call the show modal function on that. So let's save and publish. Now, when we go ahead and click the open modal button, we'll see our modal pops up right here. And it already also put this kind of grayish background or like backdrop on here. And you'll notice I can't click open modal button or really anything else on the page, although there is nothing else on the page. Now, I don't have a way to close this explicitly, but if I press escape, then it closes and immediately focuses back on the open modal button. These are some features that you're getting right out of the box with this dialog element. If I open the modal again and open up DevTools, we can see here that if I select the backdrop, we have this pseudo element backdrop, which is how it's styling the background. And we can see it's giving a 10% opacity to the color black. So if we wanna change the backdrop, we have to use some custom CSS, so I'll just copy this. And then I will drag in an embed right here and we'll say style and we'll just drop that code right there. I'm gonna get rid of these first two. And then also we're just looking at our dialog class here. So I'm going to make it a class by putting a period. And then we're targeting that pseudo selector of backdrop. And we've got our background equal to black. And if we wanna make it darker, we'll just change it to 0 0.5. And I'll go ahead and save and close that. Now, one thing that is kind of a bummer is if you come over to settings here and we add that open attribute again, um, we'll see that we don't actually see our backdrop. So for however it's triggering the uh, modal to load up here, we're unfortunately not getting that. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete and delete and publish just so that we can see our new backdrop. So let's go ahead and open modal and we can see our backdrop is now a bit darker. So next, let's go ahead and add a close button. I'm just going to add, take this button and copy it and paste it right here in the dialog. And again, we can't see it, which is very unfortunate, but we can always just grab it this way. And then we can see we have this button here. So let's go ahead and we've grabbed this button. We want it to be a button, but we're gonna change the uh, the attributes here to be close button and the text will just be close. I'm not gonna make anything fancy today. We're gonna make a very ugly project today. And we'll just go ahead and set the position up to the top right and so that our uh, element is right up there. And if we check out the dialog, we see it already has a bunch of styles applied to it. It's even got some like spacing coming on here, probably from auto margin. Um, Webflow is just grabbing these based on the CSS that the dialog element is getting from HTML. 
And then we have position set to absolute so that we know this uh, this button will be relative to the dialog already. We don't have to switch this to relative or anything like that. Now let's go ahead and rename our class to close button as well. And just like we hooked up the open modal button to the dialog, we also want to hook up our close button. So in our script right after that first if statement, we'll add an else if statement. And we're going to check if the target now matches the attribute of close button value. And we'll do the very similar thing that we did with the open button is that what we'll do is we'll get the closest dialog element. And what this does, what closest does is it traverses up the DOM tree, looking at each parent until it finds something that matches. We'll store that in a variable called dialog. And if we have a result for that, then we'll call the close method on the dialog right there. So let's go ahead and save. And I'm also going to get rid of this thing by deleting this attribute and we'll publish. Okay, so we've refreshed and if we open, we can see we have our close button here and now we can close out of our modal. Now, I think it's a pretty normal use pattern to also be able to click outside of the modal and have it close rather than just having close button or pressing escape. So let's add one more bit of code to what we have here and, and it's going to be another else if statement. And what we're checking now is if it's the actual element with the dialog attribute, which we gave to that dialog DOM element. And since that has the pseudo selector of backdrop, or whatever we called it, then this is the one that is indeed being clicked when you click on the backdrop. It's not a separate div to worry about. So we can get the dimensions by using this get bounding client rect function that exists on dialog or any HTML element. We store that in a variable called dialog dimensions. And then we check here if you've clicked outside of the, the bounds of what that dialog element is. So if any of these are true, then we're gonna call the dialog.close method as well. And one minor mistake, instead of dialog, we'll just say e.target here since we don't actually have a variable called dialog. So we'll get the target, which in this case is going to be the dialog element and save and publish this. And now we can open our modal and we can click on the backdrop itself and we're going to close out our modal. We can still click our close button and everything is working just fine. One last thing you might wanna do is actually animate this dialog in and out. So we can try to use this with CSS transitions. So let's go ahead and, you know, our dialog element, we're gonna add a transition. Let's just do opacity and I'm gonna make it 400 on an ease. And what we'll do is we'll come back into our HTML embed and I'm gonna call this modal settings or just something so that we can see it from the navigator. And right down in here, then we'll say the dialog has an opacity of zero. And we will then also say the class of dialog with an attribute of open will have opacity of one. So I'm just doing this in custom CSS right here and we'll save it and publish. And on our publish page, we'll see that it actually doesn't work. And the reason for this is that the dialog element has some default display of none when it's not actually open. So we can then see if we go in here and come to attributes and set open to true and we come over to the style, then it's actually, let's try to reselect it here. So now it's display block. So something we can do to kind of get around this, it's not the most convenient thing to work with in Webflow. It can get a little bit annoying for sure, but we'll just go ahead on our dialog here and we will set the base display to be flex. Now it's flex, which means this thing is no longer hidden and we run the risk of stuff popping up over our open modal button. So I'm not actually able to click the open modal button right now because the dialog is like phantomly above this open modal button. So if you want to get into animations, um, especially if you have specific use cases for your animation, this might not be the best route for you to go. However, we can also game the system a little bit by making our animations start from a scale of zero. So let's grab our dialogue element and I'm just gonna add a 2D transform and the scale will be of zero here. And then the other thing is I'm gonna set opacity to zero as well on the default element. And we'll come into modal settings. And since I set that opacity on just the class already, I can delete that. And then here we'll set the transform to be a scale of one or something like that. And since we set that scale to zero, it actually just doesn't take up any space. So we can still click on the open modal button. Now I've also got to add that transition to our transitions property over here. So we'll do that on the transform and we'll make it 400 milliseconds as well. The other thing I thought about is that we have set the display to flex, but it's horizontal. So let's set it to vertical since we have multiple elements in here, just to make sure it behaves like it did when it was display block. So now let's publish and see what we get. All right, so let's click open modal button and we can see it animates into view just like that and it closes and it animates out of view. Now, if you wanna slap a form in your dialogue element, let's go ahead and get rid of this scale and we wanna see this thing so we can get rid of the opacity here and let's go ahead and drop a form in. So form, boom, we've got that in there. Now something that's cool, we can grab this text field and we'll set the autofocus over here in settings 
to true and it's going to focus as soon as the modal comes into view which i think is a pretty cool little uh thing that we get to so whatever you give autofocus to it's going to focus on that first now let's go ahead and reset our dialogue by coming into the style here and scroll to the bottom we'll set the opacity back to zero and we'll add our scale of zero back so everything's back but we just have a form in there. Let's go ahead and publish. And now we open the modal and we see that the name is already auto-focused. And as I'm tabbing through, I've got my focus trapped within the modal um, and I'm not tabbing out into anything else. So I think that's everything I wanna cover about the dialogue element. There's just a few other things, like there's some cool stuff. You can actually have the, um, you can have the modal close out when the user submits the form. But since Webflow has the, its own default form submission behavior, it will just, it won't work. <laughs> so unfortunately I couldn't get that attribute to work. But uh, go ahead and peruse the dialogue element here on the MDN docs to figure out what else you can do. The other way that I really like doing accessible components for Webflow is with the FinSuite modal component. This is even less code and this just has like one or two attributes and a lot of cool customization options. So I definitely recommend checking this one out as well. But just wanted to showcase what we can do now with the DOM element by using the dialogue element from HTML. All right, catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.